live recording of Pat Bear's Anime Club. That's right. We are doing our spring wrap up and summer preview. I'm doing this uh, live on Twitch uh, and recording it. It's later going to be on my YouTube. So uh, however you're watching it, thank you very much. And I appreciate you being here. Um, I do want to promote, I want to plug Pat Bear's Anime Club yelling about the shows we love featuring Ian Horner, Heather Derry, myself on Friday, July 16th, 8 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash PAX2. Um, the... It will be recorded. It will be up on my YouTube after the fact, like that following Monday, I believe it'll be on my YouTube and also will be eventually on the PAX YouTube as well. Um, uh, so you can check that out. Uh, it will be very fun. We recorded it already and then it's going to go up and you'll be able to watch that. Um, and it's fun because we say at the time of the recording, this show is, isn't over yet, but I still love it because um, two of us were talking about shows that had are that were currently happening um a doodle says i have to set a reminder please do also um uh yeah so i'm recording this on twitch so there'll be i'll be referencing chat as we go and um i should say that uh, i will be hosting that stream here in my own twitch if you'd rather chat in there instead of joining the discord because that's how pax online rolls is they have a discord um instead of having live chat on twitch they just don't do chat on that which is a a a way to do it and i can appreciate it um anyway enough about that also this is the i should say it's the pax online not the pax in seattle this is the one you can go to from home and not go to in person so make that clear i'm going to the online pax um anyway uh, if you haven't seen me do one of these before, I'm going to be using AnnieChart.net. I'll have a link in the show description of the YouTube video of this um, to go through the shows from last season. Uh, a thing that I'll point out as we go and look at this is uh, occasionally if a show was like weekly, but in some part of the world was... Uh, released all at once like if it was on amazon prime japan it won't be set up in the regular tv it'll be in like ovas and it, it's odd that they do that but they do that with a couple shows so like as we scroll through this if you're like hey what happened to Juran princess of whatever it's called we'll get to it i don't know why it's not listed here in alphabetical order it isn't it's later it's fine uh we'll get to it um i did not watch every show this season but I did watch a lot of them. And some of them, I watched like an episode. And I was like, that's how I feel. Uh, that's fine. Um, this show, the first show we'll talk about here, which is 86. I watched two of 11 episodes of. Um, and I did not enjoy it. Now, it's a mech series, so I wanted to give it a chance. But look, if you read the description, there are... There, uh, these are unmanned combat drones developed by the Republic to answer the attack of autonomous unmanned drones. Um, but they're not unmanned. So there's a class of people who pilot these unmanned drones and have to fight these other drones. And of course, there's a twist in that as well, which I won't reveal because they do tie one of the mysteries of it. But it's one of those things where you're like, okay, to be fair, there is the person who didn't know this that is the, that works with them, that is trying to figure things out. And they do comment on the fact that it's like, look, I know you feel bad about what's happening here, but you can't change anything. And we don't, we don't want to feel bad for you that you feel bad. And I can appreciate that that's included, but it's very much to me just, um, it's just like, it's sad. It's good action, but it's is sad. It's a, just I'm not I'm not interested in um I I'm not interested in in this type of show, even though there are mechs. Um, but this kind of like drama, what are who you know, like the cost of war. It, it it's just very heavy handed, and I didn't enjoy the two episodes of the eleven that I watched. Also, it was eleven episodes, which is interesting. Um. Uh, backflip. I watched some clips of backflip. There are times where I have enjoyed sports anime, but overall, I'm not a huge sports anime fan. So um, I didn't end up watching this. Now I could be, maybe I maybe I messed up. Maybe I should have watched this uh, sports anime, and I missed out on a very fun show. 
time will tell. One of my favorite shows uh, last year was getting really into uh, IQ um, and getting really into the volleyball anime. I have liked some sports anime before, but I don't go out of my way to watch it. So maybe I missed out on backflip. Uh, I know that the actual gymnastic routines were CGI and apparently it looks very good. They did a good job of making it feel otherworldly because there's no way to not make it feel otherworldly, um, but making it feel like a performance choice. And I can appreciate that. I think that's awesome because we will be talking about blending CGI with digital animation quite a bit. Uh, not a sports anime person uh, as well. For myself, might be good. I'll never know, says Doodles. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like I watched Jury and Ice because it was a gay love story that also was about ice skating. I didn't go into it for the ice skating. I went into it because people were talking about how like great it was uh, and how, what the story it was so compelling. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll watch it. And I really liked it. Um, so I believe this is a double length. Yeah, because this is a this is another uh, Bakugan anime. Have not watched it. Uh, don't know anything about it. Can't tell you anything about it. Oh, also I should say, uh, any chart does goes by seasons, but they don't include ongoings. So I won't be talking about um, Naruto or Baruto. I should say Baruto or One Piece or maybe yeah, like some of the other ongoings that are out there. I won't be chatting about those. Um, I kind of took a break on One Piece, but I'll go back to it. And I have not watched Baruto. Um, Bad Elite Athlete Victory Restart. I did not watch this because, uh, one, as I said, I'm not super into sports anime. And two, I've never seen Battle Athletes or Battle Athletes Victory. And these are like, this is like a continuation of the story, which is cool. Because that's a pretty old anime. But I also was like, I don't have any connection to this. So I'm not going to watch it. Also, I have heard no one I know which talk about it. Which doesn't mean anything. Because sometimes things are incredible. And I just, you know, my friends don't hear about it. But I have heard nothing of that. And I honestly forgot that it was the season. I thought it already happened. Um... Blue Reflection Ray, which is a double length. As you can see, it's 13 of 24 have aired. This is based on a video game. Um, and it is a shoujo, which I certainly watch some shoujo. Not a lot of it, but I've watched some uh, Magical Girl stuff. Um, but I have not watched this. And also, I tend to not be super into psychological stuff. It has to be very good. Uh, I feel bad because... I haven't talked about a show I'm really into yet, but we're going in alphabetical order, and it's just, we we haven't gotten there yet. We'll get there. We'll get to something that I'm like, this was a great show. Um, also, again, sports show, did not watch. Uh, maybe it's awesome. Um, uh, Card Fighter, did not watch this. Um Okay, here's one I watched uh, two episodes of. I watched this as a catch-up, so I'll be talking more about this uh, in my regular streams. Um, uh, Cestus, the Roman fighter. I'm just going to call it the Roman fighter. Um, holy shit, this is hard to watch. Um, so, obviously, some historical accuracy in this. It is uh, set in the time of the Roman Empire, uh, slaves are uh, trained to fight as gladiators, and there's like a system of winning fights in order to make it to uh, the Colosseum. You don't just get thrown in the Colosseum because that's the original you did, but that's not fun for the audience. So you want to get some trained people fighting lions and each other. Uh, so you work your way up, and you work your way up by boxing. And there are, you know, soldiers and other people that watch this, the, the, the fights and winning means you move forward and it follows one dude. Uh, and um, it's all CGI. And I have been told, because a friend of mine was like, hey, you should check this out because I really like it. Well, that friend is really into MMA and boxing. And apparently it's very accurate about boxing and how it looks and the movement and the muscles and all that. Apparently it's very well done. But I can't watch it because it looks real bad and I don't like the look of it. It's got all the usual CGI anime problems of facial animations are expensive and hard to do and don't look right. 
and there's a lot of characters standing around because the backgrounds don't move as much and it's um i gave it two episodes and i don't think i will watch more of it because it is hard to watch i part of it is that if i was 10 15 years younger and i grew up with this cgi animation uh like if if i was a young person when ruby came out i could see myself being more uh fine with cgi but since i've not since i grew up with you know hand drawn into digital uh the cgi stuff is is harder for me to really get into or overlook um and we'll talk more about cgi as we go i'm sure combatants will be dispatched uh so this is the only isekai this season that i did not watch it's technically an isekai because he's even though it's not earth to a different world he is traveling from one world or uh world to another um and it does do the thing of like what happens when a mercenary ends up on a planet that's like rpg inspired kind of planet uh and it is the creator of konosuba and kimono michi and i don't like that at all i don't like that that creators works so i did not watch this and I know a couple people that enjoyed it, and I know a few people that were like, ah, I tried and I can't, so I'm happy to skip it. I just don't like this this creator's style of like kind of borderline gross sexual stuff. Just not my not my take. Not my thing. I promise it's so I did like things this season. We will talk about shows I liked. It just they weren't at the top of the alphabet, I guess. So I'm feeling like, oh no. Um, don't toy with me, uh, Nisuka Nagatoro. Uh, I, this is a thing with me. You, mo- you might like this. You might love this. And I will talk about a show similar to this that I did like. Um, uh, but uh, I did not watch this. I tend to have an issue with stories where the main character is belittled or made fun of but it's okay because the other character likes them it is a thing i do not respond to well in my own life and i don't respond to well in fiction um usagi chen wants to hang out was kind of an exception to that one i think it was because they were college kids and two because like it was kind of like she didn't pick on uh her senpai all the time it was just like some moments and most of the time the conflict was just like the two of them together whereas this is just like what happens when a girl just decides she's just gonna pick on a nerdy dude and also uh her friends are various other forms of that and like i'm just i'm not there for it i don't care that she's actually kind of chased and she gets embarrassed like i don't care um like i said it's just not for me it's not my style of show. Um, uh, yes, I, I hear you. Uh, uh, Doodles the great. Sometimes you know. Sometimes these shows just have great music, and you're like, or it looks beautiful. Um, uh, Nathan's here saying I didn't watch, uh, but clips I've seen make it look better than I originally thought. So that's the thing. There are some shows in here that are relationship things that seemed way worse than this and compared to them this is fantastic it's just not my thing but also i don't mind if it is oh and also don't look at the ratings here that you're to see there forget it. the sometimes shows are great and are poorly received and uh listen to me not them that's what i'll say because a 57 percent rating for dragon ghost house hunting is rude because that show is great so do i wish there was a little bit more house hunting and a little less character development oddly yeah but i love letty the dragon who's just looking for a home and daria the former demon lord who is also an elf like a very powerful elf that's a both a real estate agent and a like housing builder like a builder a house builder is just so weird and great my big thing about it is um, the human comes very late in the show. She's great, the princess. I think she's actually fun, and her dynamic is really fun with the show. 
but I wish that it had come out like he had shown up earlier in it. Uh, Dra uh, Dragon goes, House Hunting was great fun, and Letty is a precious uh, scaly cinnamon roll. Yes, Letty, the dragon who's just trying to be do their best. A uh, the thing I'll say about this show is every minor character gets so much attention to detail. They're beautifully drawn, beautifully animated, voiced really well, given their time to shine. There's a lot of humor in this show that's great, but you're like, wait, why is that character... There were a couple characters that are in there like in the very beginning and the very end, and you're like, why do they look so good? And everything is given this beautiful detail. Um, it's really great. I, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite shows this season. So great. We did get one show so far. Um, Duel Masters King. Have not watched Duel Masters King. Um, it is very clearly a show for children uh, with cards. Oh, okay. So Doodle says, the difference between a demon lord and a real estate agent is a demon lord wasn't, won't sell you subprime loan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fair. Um, uh Oh, this is a double length. I didn't know how many episodes this was going to be. I am watching this right now, Eden Zero. And if you're looking at the art of Eden Zero and you go, hey, wait, that's that blue cat from Fairy Tale. And that's, wait, that's, those are characters, those are characters from Fairy Tale. A couple of them look a little different, but those are fucking characters from Fairy Tale. Yeah, the guy that made Fairy Tale and um, uh, other things, including Rave Master, um, yeah, the fairy tale dude. As soon as fairy tale was over, he started working on a comic, uh, a manga of like some of the characters going on an adventure, and then he just did it again, but in space with like new names of some of the characters. Uh, but Happy is still named Happy, but Happy's a robot, and it's like what? And there's new characters. There's not just the same ones. There's new characters, but also. A lot of them are the same voice actors that were in Fairy Tale, and it's weird. Um, and I should note that Plu, who is a minor character in Fairy Tale, was also a character in Rave Master. And if you're asking yourself, Pat, does Plu show up at any point in Eden Zero? Eden Zero, the answer is yes. Plu does show up. It's very weird, y'all, to hear Happy again as a robot, and then Rebecca, and you're like. Who the fuck is Rebecca? What's happening? Um, it's so strange. Uh, it's very weird. I like it, but it's it's not great. But it's like I don't know. There there was a bunch of minor characters that showed up uh, when they had a bunch of uh, oh uh, they have B tubers. Uh, B tubers are generally young ladies who record themselves with three D video. Uh, and that's like a thing, that's like a weird subplot in the show. But there were a bunch of B-tubers that got introduced. Um, and some of them were, looked like characters from Fairy Tale. And so if you're real big on Fairy Tale, it's kind of neat. I was, there was a time where I was very big on Fairy Tale. I mean, I finished the series. I watched the last couple episodes as it came out. Um, this is fun, but it's, it's weird. It's, it's very strange. Um, Fairy Ron, Ron Maru, I didn't... Okay, so I'll say this. I only watched clips that were on uh, Crunchyroll's uh, YouTube channel, Crunchyroll Collection, um, because it's... It tech, this is a Magical Girl series, but all of the Magical Girls are elf men. And their transformations are pretty much what you would expect from a Magical Girl series. So they do the whole like Sailor Scout transformation, but they're dudes, they're big elf dudes. And I don't, I don't know what the fuck's going on with that show. I, like I said, I only watched, I, I told myself I'm only going to watch the Crunchyroll clips and also the Crunchyroll clips are only the transformations of the characters. They don't do any other clips of the show. So I have no idea what's going on, but it looks pretty great. So I don't know. Um, uh, Farewell My Dear Kramer, which is a sequel to Farewell My Dear Kramer First Touch. Um, look, it's a soccer anime. It's a girl soccer anime. And one of the things they say is, um, one of the things they, they're like, oh, this is a great story because there are so many characters. 
Like that's the thing they were pushing about this show is how many characters. Like look, look at all these people over here. There's so many people. I don't. I'm not a sports anime guy, um, so I didn't watch it. Uh, Fruits Basket, the final season. I am slowly catching up on this. The 13th episode is aired. Um, I fell off season two of Fruit Basket. Uh, Fruits Basket, I should say. Fruits Basket. I fell off of season two. We hit the point where I had been. I had watched the original series uh, because this the series aired in the year 2001. But the manga hadn't, uh, they hadn't finished the manga. So the anime just ended. And now they've been able to go back and they've worked with the mangaka to make it closer to the source material. Now with knowing a lot of things about the show, about the, the manga being done for many years. Um, it's a great retelling. It's a great way to get into the series. I do recommend it. Um, uh, I love that they've just been pushing it because I think it's only been like two years of running and they got through like all the the material. Um, uh, there is they've announced there is going to be a prequel series that is about Toru, the main girl's parents, and I think that rules. Uh, I think that is very cool that they are going to do. They're going to try to um, do that series because it's also been very popular. Um, so I recommend it. Um, I think it's a a quality series. The so it's it's very funny when it wants to be, and it's very dramatic and sad when it wants to be, and it wants to be dramatic most of the fucking time. And it's the supernatural part is just that there are characters who, um, the story of the zodiac, the tale that is the way you can teach a zodiac is uh, of the animals arriving to a party. Um, and these are people who represent the the zodiac, and so they, when touched by the opposite sex, uh, turn into that animal. So there's a lot about gender in here. Some of it is not great. Some of it is really fucking great. Um, there's a lot about loneliness and isolation and sadness, and it's the minor characters are all fucking incredible. It it's very good. Uh, Doodle says, I saw the first few episodes of the original run and wasn't able to get interest in the story, so I never followed uh, the remake. Yeah, I mean, look, if you don't love Toru, like, if you don't immediately, uh, just love her, uh, I don't think the show is gonna work for you. But you immediately, like, look, you don't have to like the dudes at first, because they'll grow on you, the Soma characters. Um, uh, but if you don't immediately just want the best for that special lady... Uh, then I don't think it's going to work for you, which is fine. It happens. Um, full dive. This ultimate next gen full dive RPG is even shittier than real life. Can you imagine that this is based on the light novel? Can you believe it? Um, I didn't watch this. I, I, I mean, look, I love Isekai. I love the subject Isekai. I also like MMO RPG anime. I think it's fun. Um, you know what I don't like? is yandere characters and this show is full of them the premise that a rpg is the mmo vr mmo is so real and so punishing hey xandra welcome i'm going through some anime stuff happy to have you here in chat a belated happy birthday to you uh uh so let's throw hey if you're a subscriber even though i'm recording this for youtube who cares if you're a subscriber throw the emotes in the chat because all those emotes were made by xandra um uh, but uh, but speaking of yes, well, thank you very much, Sandra. Um, speaking on full dive, I like the idea, the premise of a VR MMO that's so challenging that everyone quit it, and there's one dude who's getting like roped into completing it is interesting. It's just that uh, oh, thank you very much, uh, Air, uh, for subscribing. Appreciate that. Welcome uh, for that. I don't have that. I don't have the pop up here because we are doing a. Uh, doing a recording for for youtube here um but like every character in this show sucks like every character in full dive sucks for different specific reasons and i can't watch a show with multiple yandere characters uh and to put it as easy as i can um uh sundere are the characters that are like oh i don't like you clearly i do like you um what Yandere is, I like you so much that you have to die. 
and I can't with that. Or I like you so much, and you are talking to another woman, so I will become violent about that. Um, and yeah, so like, I don't want that. I don't want multiple characters in an anime to be that. So I didn't watch this show. Here's the thing. Will I watch the last episode? I, I might watch the last episode to see if like he wins the game. I bet he doesn't. I bet he doesn't win the game. I bet he wins something, but it's not the whole game. Uh, so yeah, not a big, did not, did not watch this. Not my style. Um, here's another show I didn't watch. Uh, I don't particularly like anime, but Dan, if I won't sit down and listen to Pat tell me about them. Well, Air, I really appreciate that. I know there are a few people out there that are like, I like hearing about these shows. I don't really want, you know, just like knowing what's out there. Um, so I appreciate that. Okay, so um, I did not watch Higero. Um, This is one of the two shows. I will say, when we talked about this, when we were doing the preview from the spring season, I made this sound like, this was one of two shows where an uh, older man and a high school girl uh, have a budding relationship. It is That is unfair. This one is not that. There is another one that is. This is not that. Their relationship is more guardian, young person. Uh, there is romance in there, but not between the two characters. So I do apologize for insinuating that, that what, that's what this was. But also, I don't want to watch this show just don't want to watch it so i didn't um i watched this one because i watch isekai i would not recommend how not to summon a demon lord uh omega which is the sequel to how not to summon a demon lord because it is still so annoyingly horny this is a specific thing like a difference that i want to put out there I don't have a problem with characters being horny, even if that's their main trait, is that they're horny. I don't mind it. I'm not a prude. But there's a difference between the characters are horny and the show is horny. And this show is horny. Like, oh, this person isn't feeling well, but it sounds like something else. <laughs> oh, well, to activate this armor this armor is very powerful and it's they're not wearing a lot of clothing just like how many hey this person was presenting as a boy because they're on the streets they're not a boy how did we find out in the bath ah. nathan says that is why i stopped watching the first season yeah nathan the first season has a has a thing where they're trying to like break the spells they're trying to break a spell and it just gets too capital h horny in a way that i was like no 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 no. i think this is interesting that they the second season is 10 episodes because the, the 10th episode ended i was like oh we're done okay i guess w there was talk of a different demon lord that's third season i guess i don't know um uh innuendo and out the other uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, it sounds like they need to take some, uh, <laughs> Peter. Um, I still like the premise of this show. It's just the execution and the actual story I don't love because I really like the idea of, I am a, uh, you know, the best MMO player of the, you know, this fantasy MMO, the very best player ends up being summoned to another world, inhabiting the character that he played, the avatar of the character. I think that's still an interesting way to do things. And what happens when you're like a, a shut in and you have to act like a demon with all, you have all these powers, you have to act like that. And this person who's like, I don't know how to talk to people, like clearly doesn't know how to talk to people. Um, some of the characters that are introduced in this, I think are fun. The new, there's some new characters in here. Uh, but overall it's, uh, it's a frustrating story. What isn't frustrating, segue, is this other slice of life isekai. It's a slice of life called I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. Hey, um, this, this story is just so fun. Uh, the main character, she died, which sucks. She died of overworking. She worked herself to death. And she's like 
offered the chance to have a new life. And she says, okay, well, I'd like to be a mortal. Um, and I'm just going to live a slow life. She's an immortal witch. Uh, it's a great title, yeah. Um, 300 years after that, she realizes that she's level 99 and the most powerful creature in the world, or human in the world, and word gets out. So all these characters show up, and some want to fight her, and some want her help. And she amasses, uh, it's really fun, she amasses a, a family. Uh, there's a dragon that, of course, has a human form, because of course she does, who is like, I want to study under you. She's like, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's a totally found family. To the point where there are two young girls, and by young I mean they're 50 years old, but they are, they look like young girls who, um, they are slime spirits. They're the, they're maybe the first ever spirits that were created from the deaths of many, many slimes. Now, now Asasa has, has daughters. She's got, you know, and then an elf shows up, who's probably my least favorite character because boozy, big boobed elf is kind of a, uh, a trope I don't need to see that often, but she's there and she gets into hijinks. Um, my favorite minor character is a teen witch. She, or it's not witch, sorry, teen witch, uh, teen ghost, um, Rosalie, who's like dressed in a sailor outfit, but also speaks like a sailor. Um, and she had a hard life and a hard death. Um, and but she's great and she's got just like great attitude. She's this guy, so fun. Um, there's another dragon that had issues with the other dragon and it takes a very long time to get the last episode. Finally, she has like a personality and it's kind of interesting to see. Um, uh, Doodle says, I sometimes worry about shows with titles that explain the whole plot, but this was a pleasant family sitcom masquerading as a fantasy as guy. There's more, uh, uh, to the series as well as a few spinoff stories that I would enjoy seeing too. Yeah. Um, because there's a whole story of Beelzebub, who is a high-ranking demon. Beelzebub's great because she's just very reliable. She doesn't live with them, because most of the characters in the show all live together. But she's like the, you know, like the friend, the aunt that shows up. She really likes the slime girl. She thinks are cute. There's a whole manga all about Beelzebub. Um, I think the long titles indicate the anime was adopted from a light novel. Yes, because light novels, to compare... I think light novels honestly go with a long title to compete with one another and to explain it is because sometimes you, you don't get an image. Sometimes you just get the title and they want to hook you like a web novel or a light novel wants to hook you in. And so they'll say the whole title. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's like, Ooh, I don't know, but I'd rather watch an anime based on a light novel, light novel than an anime based on a video game, because that is, that to me is more of a red flag. If it's a, on like a mobile RPG that I've never heard of, that's a to me much more of a like oh no than uh, the title's pretty long. Anyway, uh, I've been killing slimes is just so sweet and so great. The minor characters that introduce who are not part of the family are awesome. I love that a demon lord is just a, a young lady who is looking for a big sis that to tell her no. She's looking she's looking for light um, role play. Uh, it's maybe the most adult and least like subtext of the whole thing. Um, but yeah, overall, it's really great. And uh, I highly recommend it. And there's the manga of that. There's a manga all about Beelzebub and how she got where she is. Um, it's uh, There's like some side story stuff. And I wouldn't mind seeing that as well, because I think it's really fun. Also, because we'll get to it later, um, the, the, uh, the voice actress of uh, Azusa is also the voice actress of uh, the spider from So I'm a Spider, So What? And it's very, to me, I can't not hear it. Uh, it's so strange. Because um, there's a there's a tone she gets that feels very much like the same voice. And I love that this voice actress has just like done like two isekai big main characters, but very different characters. Um, I did not watch Mars Red. Because one look at Mars Red and I was like, oh, this... I, I can I can just feel the, the beats of this plot, right? It just feels very basic of like, well, there's vampires, but we made a special military unit of vampires to fight the bad vampires. But also there's some other stuff happening and there's probably like, it's a thing where you're just like, yeah, 
I bet there's evil shit going on and they're going to turn against the vampires because the idea of the military mobilizing vampires probably is not the final it, like way to go about fighting off vampires and controlling them. I bet there's some other shit happening. And guess what? There's some other shit. Uh, it's just... um, Yeah, I was just like, I'm not going to watch this. Maybe it's great, but I did not give it a chance. I, I will admit I didn't give it a chance. Um, because it just felt like I know what this is. Uh, this I don't believe anybody picked up. Yeah, nobody picked this up. Uh, I don't think I would have watched it. Uh, anyway, um, this is you know a kids show that just didn't get picked up. But I, yeah, it didn't look like it was gonna. Uh, like it's based. I think it's based on a fictional card game that then they're trying to sell. But yeah, I didn't watch that. Megalobox 2, Nomad. So I have not finished Megalobox um, 2. I will watch it. The idea that they made a sequel after the first one, the first one I think is great. I didn't give it, a, you know, I'm not the biggest sports fan, but I think it's a fan, sports anime fan, but I think it's fantastic. Ooh, Dirty, thank you for subscribing. Appreciate that. 23 months. Thank you for that. Um, uh, yeah, my overall thought is just that... Uh, I'm surprised they made a sequel. I think it's very good. I haven't finished it yet. Um, the animation still looks incredible. Uh, TMS does a fantastic job, especially with this. And uh, it's sad that there's more story. There's it's kind of sad that there's more story for Joe. There's more to his story. Like maybe feel bad. I was like, oh, oh, buddy, it's rough. But I think it's it's good. So I I do recommend it. Uh, watch the first one, obviously. Uh, oh, we got going on here. Uh, oh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. We're talking anime. We're going through the season. Uh, once again, folks, I am using Annie Chart. Uh, if you are wondering what website I am using to look, and we're looking at the spring season, we are going to preview the summer, but we're talking about the ones that just ended. Uh, so let's go into uh, talking about. Uh, I did not watch uh, Yukul Dreamy Mix. Uh, the sequel to the first one uh, that I don't believe has been picked up by anybody, so I did not watch it. Uh, look, I've heard very mixed things about the second season of Moriarty the Patriot, or the second half of the first season of Moriarty the Patriot. I will never know if this is good or bad, because I can't, I just can't watch like, I just can't do Sherlock Holmes adaptations, folks. Anime adaptations of Sherlock Holmes, any other adaptation. I've just watched too many of them in my lifetime. I need a break. It goes into the line of uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I'm definitely tired of and pretty tired of Journey to the West. Uh, I did watch a show last year that was technically a Goku. And I was like, oh, this character's the Monkey King. Ugh. At least they they waited to tell me this character was the Monkey King until like, almost the end of the series so i could appreciate that but yeah i just don't want to watch a sherlock holmes anime especially with the main character is moriarty like i just don't want to watch that uh mucle dreamy looks cute but i don't want to have to start using insulin yeah i mean that's just like there's a comedy little magical girl anime that's cute um this is another show here, another sequel that we didn't get over here because children's anime doesn't always show up uh, here. Um, My Hero Academia Season 5. I am watching this. We're getting 25 episodes this season. Uh, we are in the second half of the first season, or the second half of uh, Season 5. And, uh, oh, it's real good. Sandra says strong bunny girl. Yes, we are, we are getting some of our, our bunny girl. Um, uh, we're getting, y'all, uh, a big part of this season is the Class 1A versus 1B, which is very cool. And I think the, the fights are interesting. And we get to see more of the characters. And there's a character, Twin Impact, who slaps Midoriya. Uh, not Midoriya. Uh, he slaps a uh, 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 grape right in the face, uh, Manetta, and it rules. He just slaps Manetta in their combat. Um and it's great. I'm very ha I was very happy to see it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there's some stuff that's very good ab about about that. Um, very good stuff. Um, 
Deku's becoming Spider-Man. And he was, look, here's the thing. Deku was already Peter Parker with Superman's powers. Um, but he's becoming more like Spider-Man in a way that I did not, I knew because I got manga spoiled a long time ago. But it's great. He's just, it's great. Um, and there's a, you know, there's some real sad stuff coming. There's some sad stuff coming. Um, but there's some good stuff. Uh, and there was a whole Christmas episode that was very fun. Uh, that was very cute. Uh, we got Aerie in there having a, her first Christmas party. And it was very adorable. Um, but yeah, there's some, there, there's some good stuff. Uh, Odd Taxi. I wish I liked this series. I really fucking wish I liked it. Um, uh, oh, Doodle oh, was talking a little bit about... Uh, uh, yes. Um, yeah, I wish that I loved it. I just didn't. I wish I loved that Odd Taxi. I really, really do. Um, uh, all the respect to the world, the people that liked it, I just... I got two episodes in... And I don't like the, I don't like Otakawa at all. And maybe I will, but I don't. Um, I didn't. I want more about the Monza act. I want more about the Homo sapiens, the the comedy duo, because I like Monza references in anime. Um, so I wouldn't mind going back to it. And I also. Look, I know there's definitely... I didn't see the payoff to the Capoeira. I know there must be. This series of 13 episodes and people really like it, so there's got to be a fucking payoff to uh, to a, re a Capoeira reference in there. Uh, but I didn't see it. I know it's there. If, if they didn't, they fucked up. So I'm like, ah. I should try to watch it all. I just... Yeah, it just didn't hit me. I wish it did. I did not watch this, the rom-com where the childhood friend won't lose. Uh, this is a plot that feels like anyone has written this and could write this. Maybe it's great, but I don't like the premise of just a guy gets rejected because a girl already has a boyfriend. So his childhood friend who loves him secretly is like, hey, why don't we pretend to be dating to make her jealous? But obviously, obviously... She likes him, so she wants him to fall in love with her while they're pretending and have it go from fake to real. And I just like feel like I don't I just don't care. Like I don't care how the story goes. I just don't care. So I didn't watch this. I like a good romance. We'll talk about a romance anime later. I like a good romance, but I didn't watch that. Um hey this nobody's ever picked up this show. It's a comedy fantasy mystery, and that's a butt face, man. That that man that that man has a butt face. He's got a butt for a face. Uh, I don't know anything about it, and they don't know anything about it. Toei makes a butt face anime. What is that? And what is it? And why is that? And where is that? What's up with this butt face man? And why does he have five seasons of an anime? Thirteen episodes, f the fifth season. What's up? I, I I mean, when season six comes out, I'll ask the same questions, I'm sure. Uh, the next series that I did not watch is based on a novel. And, I mean, Anime Assy McGee, maybe, Nathan. Um, I didn't watch Pretty Boy Detective Club. I don't know anything about Pretty Boy Detective Club. I don't, I can't accurately talk about this. There's no good reason why I didn't watch this. I think it came out on like a Friday, Saturday, and I had a lot of anime to watch on Friday, Saturday, and I, so I just didn't. So I don't really, I can't really talk about this, and I, I apologize that I can't talk more about it. But it's like a young lady who meets a bunch of pretty boy dudes. I don't know. They're 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 hunting for a lost star. I can't. I don't know. I got something to fucking say. Hey, remember when I was talking about video game adaptations and how those feel worse than uh, anything else? Those are the big red flags. Uh, Noodles was talking about uh, uh, 
giving me something about Pretty Boy Detective. It's equal parts Hardy Boys, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, and the German side of the Philosopher's Football Game for Monty Python. Okay, that's a lot, doodles. You're, that's a lot of information. I mean, that sounds like it might be great. Seven Nights Revolution Hero Successor is not a good anime. It's based on a video game. Uh, and if you watch it, you will say, this looks pretty cool. The action seems pretty great. Uh, it's very cool that Nemo, the main character, uh, when he gets his powers, his arm becomes like a grappling hook slash like harpoon that can also become a cannon. And that's cool. I think. Hey, I think grappling hooks are fucking awesome. Um, and yeah, he joins this legendary heroes and you're like, hmm, no one, no one remembers who his hero was. That's weird. That shouldn't exist. Huh? He never talked about anything from his past. Huh? He doesn't seem to understand what the concept of love is. And when that happened, I was like, oh, no. This kid either has amnesia or he's lying. Uh, and all of the all of the twists and turns in this anime, except for one thing, all of this, because I watched all of it, all of it is incredibly rote. You can make a bunch of guesses about like what's happening here and who's this and what's that. It's very obvious. Even before they make the reveal that a good guy is a bad guy, you knew that that good person was actually a bad person. Like, you just knew. Um, there's one thing that's cool. Uh, Shirley, uh, Shirley's over here. Um, she's a vampire, and she's hiding it. So she's not a demon. She's not a demon. She's a vampire. There's di they're different. But she doesn't want anyone to know that she's a vampire. And uh, uh, she, one person knows who supplies her with blood, and they have a relationship of keeping secrets. Clearly, clearly has fema, uh, feelings for the girl. And that, and them like talking about those feelings and like talk and like making it obvious. Like, there's a, the, the main girl in the story likes the main guy in the story for no good reason. There's no reason for her to engage with him in any way and fall for him. It doesn't make any sense. But surely, that does make some sense. Shirley's relationship uh, is interesting. That's the only part of the show that's interesting uh, at all. Uh, um, I did not enjoy it. Uh, at the time of this recording, um, the Shadow House has technically not ended. So that and Soma Spider So What are the only shows. This one is on purpose not over yet, whereas Soma Spider got delayed and was supposed to be over. Um, I didn't like Shadow House. I love the idea of a horror um, slice, of, slice of life. I just visually, it this show did not interest me. Uh, I did not like the characters in the first episode. And I did not like the vibe in the first episode, so I did not continue it. Uh, Shaman King, I am, I'm behind on it. There's going to be 52 fucking episodes of Shaman King, and I'm behind on it, and I don't know when I'm going to get caught up on Shaman King. I'm so happy that Shaman King is back in 2021. That's bonkers. Um, this is a 90s manga and 90s anime, so much so that uh, the, there's a character over here, um, his, uh, his weapon that he uses in battle is a snowboard. There's a guy that rides a snowboard, and they didn't update that. They were like, nope, he still rides a snowboard, and that is great. Um, I don't usually watch horror but I used up what little I'm willing to watch Winter with Kimono Jihen. Yeah, Kimono Jihen, if you're going to watch a horror anime, that's a good one to go. I'm going to change how I'm sitting, folks. I'm going to change my seating posture right now. i get up straight here, so we're moving around. Um, yeah, Shaman King exists, and I love that it's back. It's weird that it's back. It's so weird that it's back. Um, everything old is new again, but um, my hope is that they're going to tell the story better because the anime kind of dropped the ball towards the end and the fact that they have announced they're giving it 52 episodes is kind of awesome uh so yeah also manta who is is manta anywhere in there i can't see where manta is um his voice isn't as annoying as it was in the original anime in my opinion right now not as annoying which is great because you don't need an annoying best friend um 
this is not it this is a, a, a trains that become robots and it was not released in the US uh and it's for kids I'll, it's a mecha series but I don't know anything about it here's another mecha series that I okay so the most controversial statement I will make in this stream tonight and on this recording is this the following um fact about me um with one exception and w I have never loved anything made by Trigger, except for Little Witch Academia. It's the only thing I've ever actually loved from them. Um, I like SSSS Gridman, mainly because I love Gridman, and it's a anime remastering. Uh, Promare, I think that visually it's interesting. But I didn't really like the story that much. I didn't. I didn't dig it. Um, but yeah, I liked Gridman. Gridman was. I couldn't watch Gridman weekly. I had to wait for it to be over, and then I would like go back to it. My big thing is that like there's stuff about this to really like, but it's so. This is this uh, Dinozanon is such a trigger anime, and I don't like that. I don't like Trigger as a company. As as. I just don't enjoy what they make. I would like to like this, but I don't like it. Um, and I didn't finish it. I'm going to finish it. Um, because it's a big robot anime. And also, the SSSS stands for um, Superhero... Um, Samurai Cyber Squad, where the S is a si in, in cyber with an S. Um, the superhuman, superhero samurai cyber squad, um, which is so to, to really dig into this. Gridman happens. It's a live action show. Gridman, kind of like Ultraman, but it's Gridman. They take all some of the live action robots fighting in a in a world, digital world and all that. And they remake it in America to jump off the Power Rangers VR Troopers wave of stuff and make, and they recast it, other parts of it with American teen actors. Um, one of the Lawrence brothers, um, the younger brother of the minor, of a sporting character in Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Uh, a couple other people, Tim Curry as the villain, um, and they call it Superhero Samurai uh, Cyber Squad. So that's what the four S's are. When they redid Gridman, this new reimagining of Gridman, they kept the S's in there as a tribute to the live action that took stuff from Gridman. And I think that rules. It's the thing I like most about this is what the S's stand for. Um, and I also think the big robot is cool. Um, and I do like that this dude is like, I, I need multiple people to pilot this robot. So it's you guys, including like people who know each other that are like going through a thing. And also a dude is just like, I don't know who any of you are. What is this? I kind of like that, but I don't care about most of these characters and I don't think it looks real cool and i think the music kicks ass because trigger knows how to put good music in it but it's it's not the i didn't watch all the episodes the episodes i did watch are not as horny as trigger can get but also i don't count on it not getting horny in a way after late horny i cannot tell you if they get that or not i gotta talk with um ian because uh ian uh, who's uh, going to be in my live one, uh, uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club, yelling for the shows of love, coming to PAX Online, the PAX that it's online. Uh, Ian Horner, I know, really enjoyed uh, Dinozion. And uh, uh, I don't know if I got to talk to him about it because I want to know what he liked about it. So yeah, that's my big, like, my big, big capital, like, B, big thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, I want to like Trigger because I think their animation looks cool, 
but the, the rest of it, I'm like, nah. Uh, okay, so, hey, Super Cub is my favorite show this season. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, no, I don't like Space Patrol, Dirty. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, Little Witch Academia, uh, I like a lot. And I, the Gridman, I don't hate. But it's hit or miss, and everything else, not not my style. Uh, don't like what they do. Um, but I did love Super Cub. Super Cub is my favorite show this season. It's not for everyone. If the idea of okay, so this is the this is an anime of girls being into a thing, and that thing is low end motorcycles that are like souped up mopeds called cubs. And it is about cubs and being into a Honda Super Cub and be and and you know and and getting into that. But mostly it's about a young lady who doesn't think she has anything to really live for m taking the steps to open up her world and the possibilities of what like what she could do, opening up the possibility space as small as. Oh, I don't have to wait till till my day off from school to go to the grocery store. Because I don't have to take a bus to the grocery store. I can take my my super cup. Oh, I I this you know, I, I want to go and do this. I, I can. Oh, I met somebody who also has a cup. And maybe we wouldn't be friends otherwise, but we're really friends because we're super into this. Oh, and I'm taking steps. I got a summer job. I'm helping, I'm going out of my way to help people where otherwise I wouldn't be able to because I have this. And it's it's a beautiful story. And the music, as Koguma, as her world opens up, the music opens up and becomes like more instruments. And there's an episode with Raiko, who is the girl uh, that's laughing, uh, which is just a strange thing, um, where it's her, focused on her and the music is like, sounds like it's music for like a fight in an RPG. Just like... It's totally just so different. Um, it's a beautiful little story. It has a couple moments that don't feel real and don't feel down to earth that I'm not a huge fan of. It 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 builds into a dramatic moment that I'm like, that seems like bullshit. But uh, but that's my only complaint with the entire series. Uh, Doodle says. Uh, Super Cub is a delightful, sublime story. Watching Koguma come out of her shell slowly and try to break free from the cycle of depression she was stuck in was glorious to watch. Yeah, this is a show where a goofy, shit-eating eating grin on the face of a young girl is enough to make you you tear up. It hits you in a beautiful way. It's There's a drama in it that is just unbelievably fantastic. Uh, and you maybe you'll learn a little bit about that. I uh, learned about us, the cub. Um, I think it is really fun. It's really great. Um, the character she, who is in the middle, uh, it takes a while for me to for her to really become part of the story. She's like in the background, but then she eventually gets to do some stuff, and her situation is really interesting. Um, also it becomes to me kind of really important. The fact that she has parents who are around because the other two girls don't, uh, and having like that level of grounding is interesting, even if they are weird because they're weird parents. So it's one of my favorite shows this season, probably my favorite. The other show that is vying for the title of my favorite show this season is the one we're going to talk about next, which is, Oh, uh, and while Honda didn't sponsor the series, uh, they went out of their way to help technically in almost every single motor vehicle in the story. It's one of theirs. Yeah, totally. I mean, like, it's about the Cubs. Um, it's not like, yeah, it's not co-produced by Honda, but they were very psyched about the show. Um, the Saints Magic Power is omnipotent. So for a second there, just forget that this is an Isekai. Because it's using the trappings of Isekai, the, the setup of an Isekai, to just tell a really sweet love story. Uh, oh, what we got going on here? What happened there? We get a follow, we get there. Uh, oh, Harold's here. Uh, welcome, Harold. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I assume that means you're hosting. That's what the noise was. Um, the Saints Magic Power is omnipotent, omnipotent is just a love story, but to get to the love story, we've got to do this whole thing of a woman is summoned. Two women are summoned to a magical world. 
and a prince shows up and is just like, hey, you're definitely the saint. I'm so glad to meet you. And he doesn't say that to say, to say S-E-I, say our main character. And she's just ignored. Well, she's the fucking saint. The dude was wrong. He just thought that the young lady uh, was definitely, and he just like made a judgment call that fucked up. So Say is kind of left alone for a little while. They're like, they're keeping an eye on her. They're going to see she's from another world. She might have magical abilities because there's some shit going on. But it's just kind of like her, like finding her place in this new world, discovering her powers, meeting a dude, uh, meeting. Look, let's be real. She meets lots of dudes and they are all various. Like, I like to take care of you. Uh, I think you're neat to, you. oh, I'm in love with you. Um, to, I really want to understand your powers and I'm going to be a little creepy about it. Uh, they run the gambit a little bit. But it's just this is just really attractive men. There's a late season introduction of a character that is just like, it's dude that's like, he's, got like a, he's a mer head of a mercenary group, uh, but he's a good guy, but he's just wearing like no sleeves. He's, or no, no like sleeves on his shirt. He's got like a shirt, like a tank top, but then he's got like long gauntlets on his arm. Uh, Leonhardt, he's just a hunk. He's just a big Kimbo. Great. Um, uh, they call one dude, uh, Commander Hawk, uh, the Ice uh, May or the Ice Knight because he's a knight that can use ice magic. But also, he's a real uh, tough dude. You know, he's real icy. But he just gets saved by Say and immediately falls in love with her. And it's just this, like, low, slow, like, low impact, slow. There's drama. There are moments. There, there's, some, there's some fighting that happens. There's, there's like, a, a, like, some dramatic things that take place. Uh, but it is mostly just, like, a cool romance that's set in this fantasy world of, like, just, like, a nice lady with cool powers and the dudes that are real into her. And it's so good. Um, Saints Magic Power is Omnipotent is one of my favorite shows this season. I highly recommend it. Uh, I don't know if I would have watched it if it wasn't an Isekai. And I'm glad I did. But, I, you know, I, I, like, I like the different world as a, you know, a way to tell stories. And I like this inter interpretation of that. Um, okay, so... The Slime Diaries is takes place mostly uh, at the mostly during the events of season one of that time I got reincarnated as a slime, and hints a little bit at what what's to come in season two. Now, if you have not been watching that time I got reincarnated as a slime, the second half of the second season is coming out uh, in the summer, uh, so very soon. Um, uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime went from a interesting take on. Um, the isekai genre to another isekai it got it got darker it got more intense the story picked up it got a little less light slime diaries is light as you can see you maybe if you've watched the, the the you know that time you know that the art in this one is a little more chibi it's a little more cute and playful uh if the idea of milum the the uh the demon lord the the you know the daughter of dragons milum uh if the idea of seeing her in a cozy hoodie uh, uh and and like with her hair up in buns and you're like well that sounds pretty cute it's very cute uh if like me you wish that geld got more screen time geld gets time to shine in this series it's fantastic um it plays into, like, it gives characters that don't really have a personality more personality. It features characters that got cut for, like, uh, from the anime that are in the, the light novel and in the manga. Um, like, minor characters you don't really see much get their time to shine in this. And it's literally characters that are, that haven't, there were two characters that are briefly cut to that haven't been introduced in the regular anime yet. But they got introduced in this one. I'm like, oh, that's cute. I really like that. Um, it is such a good show. It's so cute. Uh, they run through the... Um, uh, Sandra says, I'm still uh, angry about the lizard. Ladies, level up. We were denied a hot lizard. Yes, we were denied a hot lizard because she's just a human lady with wings. But this one focuses on her clearly love of, uh, of the ninja Soe, which is very fun. Um, 
their like time together is very cute. Uh, this is just very cute because it runs the whole year, so you get to see like summer stuff. Um, you get to see uh, winter. You get to see like spring. Um, they give Trini the uh, the dryad like a weird per- like she owns a bar in town for some reason. She has like a fun personality which you don't really get. Like she just like is annoyed that she doesn't get to- invited to things. Um, uh, there's a running gag of signs on doors when Milam shows up that just says "Please open lightly," and you see the sign as the door just gets completely opened. Um, she calls Shion one horn, and then. Shion always just answers with, uh, my name is Shion. And then Milan goes, yeah, that. And I'm just like, say her, say her actually name. It's very cute. It's very fun. Uh, if you like the first season, I think you'll like this uh, because it's just more slice of lifey and less um, brutal. Uh, Rimuru doesn't kill anyone in this show. So it's pretty good. I did not watch The World Ends With You, the animation. I walked, I played that game many moons ago, and I don't think I ever finished it. And I watched some clips of it, and I was like, I don't think I'm going to watch this. This seems very generic. So I didn't watch it. I did watch those Snow White notes, and I got fucking opinions on those Snow White notes. First of all, I don't understand how you read this manga, because it's about shamisen players. And if you, to me anyway, having watched it and not read it, I don't know how you read that because the, hearing the music, hearing the music that doesn't make much sense or work right, hearing the beautiful music that's playing, hearing the competition towards the end of the series. Um, gonna watch Slime Diaries before season two. Nathan, you don't have to, um, but you, you could if you wanted to. You can just watch it whenever because it is just play, take place during season one. But I, it gives like a little bit of foreshadowing of things that are to come, but not much. I would say Slime Diaries doesn't work if you haven't watched season one of that time I got reincarnated slime. But anyway, those Snow White notes. It's a beautiful story about a broken young man. And I have to stress this, that uh, Setsu is 16. And there's too much pressure on this kid to continue the legacy of his grandfather and the shamisen. Uh, so much so that he's just like, when his grandfather dies, he's like, I don't, I lost my sound. I don't know what I'm doing. I was chasing my grandpa. What am I going to do? So he like moves to Tokyo and like gets a, he, like meets some people. And there's a whole episode where you're like, oh, that's what this show is. Okay. So he's like, going to be with other broken people and they'll like build each other up and they'll like find his sound and and this whole thing right no that's just the first episode to me that feels like that was the manga pitch like someone like the creator made this first chapter of a manga to be like this is the story like and then it got bought and he was like actually it's not about that because you see episode two his mom shows up puts him in school and then it's about the shamisen club him like founding a new version of the Shamisen Club to help a girl, and then there are other characters there, uh, and and they're gonna play in this competition that's starting up, and you're like, that's not the anime you you sold me. You sold me a kid that moves to Tokyo that's trying to like figure himself out, and now you're having a kid that's trying to fix other people's problems where clearly he needs help. What's happening here? Um, and the music is incredible. Don't get me wrong. The music is beautiful. I don't know why they, they did a second song. The first song is incredible. They did two opening themes to the show. They did not need to do that. First song is beautiful. Um, the music is unbelievable in the show. Watch some clips. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Watch some clips on YouTube. Uh, check, check out the YouTube playlist on the Crunchyroll World Collection. It's fantastic. Um, and when it, when it stops being about trying to make people who've never played the shamisen okay at the shamisen and becomes this competition, because there's a group competition and then there's a solo competition. Once we meet the other people that are very good, then I also feel like I was cheated because if the show had gone from, oh, he's on his own to now he has to be in a competition and we got to meet those other characters sooner, 
I would have really liked that way more than what we got. So this went from being my most one of my most anticipated shows this season to a show I really like some of. There's a great show in it, but it's bogged down. Like I just like I didn't care about some of those characters. Like I don't care about the dude that like we it takes like 10 episodes, 9 episodes to find out that one of the guys that I don't care about, I'll reason to care about him that like he got hurt playing soccer and he's dealing with that, like he can't play soccer anymore and I'm like, that's cool why didn't I hear about that before right now yeah, so anyway um, it's weird it, it's a mi- this this anime is a mixed bag that I still think is cool because uh, I also like the music um, Thunderbolt Fantasy Sword Seekers 3 look I can't tell you I think this show is incredible I can't describe it properly I don't know if I like it but I know that I love it if that makes sense I love this show and I don't think I particularly enjoy it it's puppets. It's marionettes. It's marionettes. I don't think it's an anime. But I don't think it's... It's great. It's great. And this season was good. And it's weird. It's so weird. Um, okay, so... To Your Eternity... To Your Eternity is not done yet. We're episode uh, 13 is airing very soon. Um, we're going to uh, 20 episodes. So it's a it's a double length. Um, almost total double. Uh, but, you know, it's not, uh, not 24. It's going to be 20. Um, this is a show that will win awards at, like, the Anime Awards. It will win. It, people will call it their favorite anime of the year. Uh, or at least the favorite anime of this season. Um, I can't watch it because I know that this show is just going to be kicking my ass. Because I know that this show is brutal because so many people, when the previews were happening for this season, were like, oh, I can't wait to to be sad with To Your Eternity. Um, yeah. Because it's about this weird creature trying to figure out what it means to be anything and grow and learn. And there are a lot of... So here's the thing. If you watch this show and there have been two episodes in a row where things are looking good or people are happy, just be ready to to fucking cry because it's coming. Nobody stays happy in this show. I can't handle it. I have avoided the show because it looks like it'll kill me emotionally. Yeah. Like, I don't have it in me to watch To Your Eternity. Like, I don't... I, I 2021 Pat Bear cannot. Maybe 2019 Pat Bear could have. Maybe even 2020 Pat Bear. 2021 Pat Bear? I'm not watching To Your Eternity. It will win awards. People will, will rave about it. Like I said, um, I will be saying it's the best show I will never watch. Um, it is in some ways a little similar to me anyway of like um, uh, Promise Neverland where like I can't wa- I just Children in Peril is just like a no-go for me. Like I just can't. So I'm never going to watch Promise Neverland because I just like no thanks. Don't need that suspense. No thanks. Um, Tokyo Revengers is a double length. Uh, uh, they don't actually know. I think it's ongoing. We don't know how many episodes it's going to be. Um, they haven't said, but but it's continuing. Um, Tokyo Avengers is really weird because it's better than it should be, and I don't know if I like that. So to explain my weird thought processes on this show, our main dude thought he was a pretty cool. He was in a little gang, and he was just fucking around. He was in a gang. He's in a gang. Whatever. Uh, they got absorbed into a more powerful street gang of young people. And it didn't go well. This is in middle school. Uh, and he 
his life is shitty and he hates everything and his he breaks up with his girlfriend and he runs away he just takes off he runs away can't do it and then years later uh despite it sometimes they say he's middle aged he's in his early 20s uh it's a bad translation that people kept copying he's in his early 20s and he finds out that his middle school girlfriend and and her younger brother died because these gangs just got out of control and now it's become this whole thing and then he gets pushed in front of a train and dies but he doesn't die he goes back in time to a moment literally the day that he gets his ass kicked and his group ends up like where his life turns bad and at that first time, the first jump, he's like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. It, a thing that's interesting about that is he doesn't remember details. Like, up until the point where they get their asses kicked, he forgot that happened that day. Like, he looks at himself in the mirror and he's like, what, did I always look this shitty? Like, his friends who he thought were cool, he's like, oh, we're lame. We're, we're you know, we're not cool at all. We're, we're like goofballs. Um, lame is a bad term. I'm sorry about that. Um, but he's like, we suck. Uh, so he's like, oh no, I, I don't remember anything. He doesn't remember things. And then he, uh, he runs into the younger brother of his girlfriend, who he had never met before. And he talks to him and he tells him, he just opens up to him. He goes, I traveled back in time to this day. In the future, you and your sister die. I don't think I can prevent it. You have to. When this these dates happen, you have to save your sister. And they shake hands. And he, he wakes back up. He didn't die. Nita's younger brother saved him, saved his life. He's a cop now. And he saved his life because he knew when he was going to die. But Hinata died anyway. So the future has been changed, but it's not the future he wants. And they touch each other, and he the loop starts again, and he goes back in time. And whenever they touch in the past or the present or the future, time travel happens, and we don't know why. So this dude has to fix the problem he has to like he has vague ideas of what goes wrong and what things need to get fixed and how things went where the the imagine gang breaks down and changes but he's not good at fixing it because he's just a middle schooler the the knowledge of the future does not make him stronger or faster or tougher no smarts are going to help him fix that it's through the fact that he's like a pretty good dude and he's trying really hard and people respect that and the people around him are going to try to help him. And that fucking rules. But it, I don't, I think I wish, I, I think it. I would like it more if he was using the knowledge he has in the future to make him a better person and like kicked more ass like it's not that kind of fantasy it's not an overpowered main character he's underpowered so i think over time i'm really gonna like that but at present the thing that holds me back is oh, this dude just sucks um uh i just thought this was him reliving high school i didn't think he was back and forth no he he moves back and, and it's important because episode 12 could have been the end of the show or the end of the series it's episode 12 sets it up like it's the end of the series and then they announced it was it was more episodes were coming it's ongoing uh it's it's continuing because things didn't turn out right he didn't fucking fix it and i i think that's really cool i mean it's called tokyo revengers i was gonna give it a chance uh and the other uh, characters that you're like oh he's gotta like figure these guys out or like they're kind of cool. I mean, they're like real tough and weird, but have like some honor in a way that's kind of fun. And like when he thinks he like saved the day, he's just, it's, it's goofy in a way that I really enjoy, but it's also like heartbreaking. 
because he's it's not just saving uh Hinata, and it's not just saving the younger brother it's saving a, a lot of the characters in the show it's fixing a lot of the problems in the show or in, a lot of characters that need help uh because yeah i don't know it's it's really good i do think i i think i would like it more if he was an overpowered main character uh uh, uh, what's up with every fan of the show on Twitter having the Manji in their name? I don't know. I mean, I I assume that people who really like the show picture themselves in the gang. Uh, it might be just a thing. I don't know. Anyway, I really I really appreciate what it's doing. I think I would enjoy it moment to moment more if it was a little different. Uh, but I do think it's cool. Like, there's a show coming up next season, which we'll talk about, because we're almost ready to talk about next season, finally, um, where it is a restarting your life, but I think it's going to be, like, more wacky, and I'm more interested. I'm, I'm interested in that, too. Anyway, uh, Tokyo Revengers is way better than I had really thought it was going to be, and so that's cool. Um, I have not watched Vivi because it's, it's a cool, weird premise about an AI girl who sings and dances and a ai from the future that just shows up and is like hey we have a hundred years to save mankind from ai in a hundred years we and humanity is wiped out by robots so we have a hundred years to fix that you have to help me with your music i don't think the music's that good and the first episode i watched i was like nah. I know some people that really like this, but I was like, no, nah, I'm good. So that's that show. I don't have anything else to say about that. Um, here's the ongoing second season. Here's the last Isekai. We'll talk. Well, not the last one. Here's another Isekai we'll talk about. Welcome to Demon School Irmakun season two. Um, I didn't like the first uh, arc of this season. It's a double length. Um, it's getting 21 episodes, but it's so fun. Uh it's just a, a a nice little boy that got sent to a demon realm and has to pretend to be a demon and go to demon school. Um, the, the the realization that he's doing bad in school because he doesn't have common se sense knowledge about the netherworld is something that I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. He wouldn't he wouldn't know common things about demon flowers. Why would he know that? The only subject he's good at is mythological creatures because those are all like things from earth that he knows that everyone else just kind of maybe believes in like you know did you know that in the world uh of, in, 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 on earth there are these creatures that 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 look like our cats but don't have wings and you're like yeah yeah yeah, yeah cats yeah uh it's very funny uh, i think it's a very funny show i really like welcome to demon school and raccoon like i said there was a there's a a story in there that I wasn't super thrilled with when, where it starts, but it picks up in its pace, and I really like it. Uh, Yokai Watch, there's there's more Yokai Watch. This is Yokai Watch Musical Note, which is the sequel to Yokai Watch Exclamation Point. I'm sure there's a thing that's called that. It's not called Music Note, but uh, Zombie Land Saga Revenge is is folks. I don't watch idol shows. I don't watch music themed shows. Zombie Land Saga and the sequel Zombie Land Saga Revenge is so fucking good. It's so weird and good. It is the the thing that happens in, in Japan is if you make a show about a thing in Japan, the that thing will rally a ma a around you. They will rally around you and support you. So Saga loves this show because it's a show about trying to save saga uh in fact in the second season there's a natural disaster that they help try to help with uh does the manager get any better at all yeah so he's um his uh off love doesn't fade but they start to just ignore him in many instances which i think is great um because there's an episode uh, where Lily is just like, I'm in charge of this now. I have a plan. I'm going to go on a TV. I'm going to do a, like a, you know, Japan's Got Talent style show. Uh, 
you know, I'm going to sing a song and do this thing for the for children's entertainment, and then I'll be able to promote the group. And he, she did basically like takes over, uh, which is really funny. Uh, but yeah, he does suck. Uh, there's starting to be look his justification of it, of all of this, not only to save uh, uh, Saga, but also to give the girl that he thought was super talented who died before she had a chance, like his classmate, to give her a chance um, uh, to fulfill her dream is kind of interesting. Um, but also, there's we finally get backstory and a couple characters that you were like, you're from the Mejin era. You were a... You're like... Yeah, you probably didn't die like in your sleep. So what's up? Like finding backstories really interesting this season. I think it's really great. Um, the CG for the dancing CGI I can look past because I think it's so fun. Um, and uh, no spoilers, but if we don't get a third season, they fucking they wrapped up. They did a great job wrapping it up. They're actually, the twelfth episode. Um, was longer. It was it was twenty seven instead of twenty four. They gave it or twenty eight minutes. They gave it more time, um, and it's totally worth it. It's great, but the very last frame of the twelfth episode is bonkers. And if they don't pay it off, that's it's incredible. If they if they actually don't get a third season, it will be an unbelievable way to end the show. No, again, no spoilers, but it's bonkers. All right, so. TV shorts, I only watched one TV short, so we're going to there. A bunch of these TV shorts, you just, nobody gets to see. I didn't watch Gloomy the Naughty Grizzly, because I'm not going to fucking watch that. There's no way I'm going to watch that. The only short I watched was Let's Make a Mug 2, which was 14-minute um, episodes, and then, and then there was a live action. And an interesting thing about this show is, we got the live action. It's on Crunchyroll. The live action isn't a retelling of the story, it's um, the four voice actresses of uh, the main characters doing stuff in uh, Tajimi City, um, going to events. It's clear that Tajimi put so much money into this. They co-produced the show, that the, the their travel board put a ton of money into the show. The show would not exist without that money. Um, and honestly, the voice actresses are part is more fun. It's clearly a promotion, but they're rapport and them talking is so fun and cute i think it's really fun to check that part out and it's interesting that we get that because we don't get that stuff we don't get the live action tv promotion the, the fairly recently the first season of laid back camp there was a um there's an episode zero that we got which is uh one of the voice actresses going camping like that's if we get anything it's that we don't get um like voice actors of the show going to real locations and use it. So overall, this is a fun little slice of life. My big complaint about it is it's a it's one of the girls into a thing anime, which I really love. There's not enough about um pottery. There just isn't enough about pottery. There's honestly too much about the main character and her dead mom. And sorry, that's what it is. Uh, there's just, uh, her mom was an incredible, uh, she didn't know this. Her mom made ceramics and was incredible. And so she's trying to follow in her mom's footsteps, kind of, not really though. And there's a competition coming up, which I don't, I was like, I don't. One of the characters, the character here all the way on the right is not part of the club. She says the club she belongs to is the Hime Club, which is Himeno. And I want to know way more about this girl that is just there to support her friend who she's really into and what the fuck that means because they don't tell me what that means and they don't subtext what that means either. It's not like, oh, it's not like Cardcaptor Sakura where there's a girl where you're like, well, that girl's in love with that girl. Like that's, maybe that's what this is, but maybe not. I don't know. What's up? Uh, yeah, I wish it was better. Um, but it's still cute. It's just not as good as it could be. Um, all these other are like mini stories and kid stories. Um, 
Uh, this nobody got, and I kind of think it was. This is a cool idea. This is a mix of live action and um, digital uh, that looked cool, but uh, but we didn't get it. Uh, it's an idol show. Um, Back Arrow. This is my last opportunity for a while to tell you that the character's named Back Arrow is because someone calls him a Bacaro, and he goes Bacaro Back Arrow. Back Arrow, that's my name. My name is Back Arrow. So someone calls him an idiot, and he is, he's like, sure. Sure, that's my name. And if you think, I bet this main character that doesn't have a memory, there's some, there's some, like, bullshit about that character. You, you'd be right. Yeah, there's some bullshit. And also, I don't know why a bunch of the characters have a cowboy wear cowboy outfits. It does, it's just weird. It's a weird show. Um, so I didn't I didn't finish the, that. Uh, so I'm a spider. So what? This is a lie. Twenty four episodes have not aired. The twenty fourth episode was supposed to air last Friday, but because of production issues, they didn't air it. Which to me tells me that either the main studio or the Chinese studio that does all the the uh, computer generated. There's a problem at one of those two studios. Um, so this is, a, this is supposed to be 24 episodes. Same voice actress that does uh, I've Been Killing Slimes. Um, so much better, so what? Did a very interesting thing. The It is, there are two stories happening at once. The honest to God truth is, up until very recently in the 23 episodes I've watched, I do not care about one half of the story. I care very much about this girl who got reincarnated as a spider trying to figure out what's up and how to like survive and do her thing. And I care less about the war between the elves and the one dude who's being taken over by the demon and another dude and like the other the guy who should be the main character of the story if there wasn't a spider. He was the hero. He's got the title of hero. Like, I don't care about that dude. But yes, Komiko, Spider is the best. Spider is great. Spider is so weird. Of uh, This voice actress is doing, like, one big role and then minor versions, like, variations of her own full, like, character. The fact that there's a time gap between uh, the books have them separate. Yes, that's the thing. So, the manga looked at the source material the light novels and the web no or or it's the light novels the original version of the story either light novel or web novel did this thing that the anime is doing which is this interlaced story that actually at first you don't know um uh you don't know that this show is uh jumping between time you think it's just like happening at the same time and you're jumping locations the original material did that. And then um then the and then the manga, I should say. So explain it. the manga took all that out and did it as separate stories. And they were like, let's follow the spider, let's see what's going on with the spider. Um and you're saying, yes, the the dynamic that uh they led to an interesting revelation about the time gap. Yeah. Um and there's like a character that remembers running into the spider. And it kind of sets up a bunch of information that's interesting about like, oh, oh, that dragon egg is from this thing. And oh, that silk is from this. Um, uh, Aoyuki, also starring Aoyuki, featuring Aoyuki with special guest Aoyuki. Yes, no, this totally is. This voice actress, is, this is her show. Um, but uh, yeah, I just... I like I like that they jump back and forth. I wish I cared more about one story um, than I do. And then also, because we know some of the stuff that happened in the past, the, the real thing is that, like, honestly, when it comes down to it, it's like, yeah, I'm sorry that your brother in this world died and you're fighting to do all this other stuff and you're going to fight the demons. But, like, I think I'm rooting for the demons, dude. Sorry. I'm pretty sure I'm rooting for the demons. Sorry, dude. Uh, anyway, um, I think that it is very good. 
And I think that if you if you want to skip all the parts that are not about the spider, you totally could. Uh, does not chew scenery. She delicately opens her mouth and swallows it whole. Yes, to paraphrase Dorothy Parker, that that is that is an accurate statement. You're you're not you're not wrong there. Um, okay, Seven Deadly Sins. I have not watched Seven Deadly Sins in a quite some time. Um, this is the fourth season of Seven Deadly Sins. I watched one and a half seasons of this and maybe five minutes of the movie. I cannot tell you anything about the Seven Deadly Sins Dragon's Judgment. I don't know who the dragon is. I don't know what the judgment is. I just know this show, to me, went real off the rails. And if you like it, fuck yeah. Uh, movies, I did not see. I saw one movie. Uh, oh, I didn't know there was a Kramer. Oh, it's a prequel movie. Kind of interesting. Um, I think I saw one movie. We're going to go faster because we're almost done talking about old anime and then we can get to new anime. Um, I have not seen Hathaway yet. I will see Hathaway. Don't worry. I'm going to watch it. Um, legally. Uh, I will watch it legally. Uh, okay. So now, OVA's own a specials. Um, Let's see. Uh, we'll get through this quick. Uh, I'll just talk about the thing I saw. I have not seen Godzilla Singular Point. Um, I know v people have talked very big about it and it sounds fucking cool and it's very fucking scientific. There's a lot of science theory in this one. Um, I have not seen it, so I cannot tell you anything about it. But I've heard good things about it. Um... The 13th episode of Heaven's Design Team, they put that out. This is available on Crunchyroll, which is great. The Crunchyroll picked this up because you don't often see those extra episodes show up. It's good. It's another episode of the show. If you liked Heaven's Design Team, here's another episode. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, didn't watch that. Uh, if you thought that Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon was like horny, this is the OVAs are capital H horny. If you were like, not horny enough, watch the OVAs. Uh, I have not seen that one, but I've seen others. I don't know why. I, I believe that this was this was like, okay, yeah. So this was on Hulu, like all at once in Japan or something. That's why it's categorized here. I don't know. Joran, the Princess of Snow and Blood, um, is the, the simple explanation of this show makes it better sound better than it is because the one sentence explanation i can give you the show or premise is um it's the crow but a samurai lady because it is the crow but this but but she's a samurai lady um but also it's heartbreaking and it's the action is sometimes incredible looking and sometimes feels very cheap and also uh, I'm not going to go beat for beat on the ending because I did watch the whole thing. But if you were um, if you were hoping that this was um, like a good ending, it's not. It's not a good ending. Um, there is a, uh, a missing element of agency. There's some agency that would have been great if it, if it had. And they didn't. Uh, and there's like a tease of it of a cool wrap up of the series and they don't pull it off. It's a uh, I don't think it's worth your time. That's about all I can say about that. Um this is also not worth your time. Uh I have not found a good because this is Funimation didn't put this out. Funimation often doesn't put out. They sometimes do, but they rarely put out um uh, uh OVAs. I've heard very bad things about this OVA for the second season of um, uh, Love is War Kagusama. Season two was really great. It made my top 10. Um, so this is a series that ran episode by episode. So I don't know why it's in this 12. Oh, because it, it streamed in advance on Amazon Prime. So that's why it ended up here. It, whatever. Anti-chart. They're free. So, you know, take what you can get. This was the uh, old, uh, older dude is suddenly interested in a young lady. Uh, show that I there was no way I was going to watch this. There's just no way I was going to check this out. Um, because she, she's like, You're a creep. And he's like, Oh, now I'm interested. And I'm like, Get out of here. 
Um, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S short animation series. We're getting a second season of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, which is Dra Dragon Maid S. This was a uh, chibi mini series, um, uh, 13 episodes, uh, just like cute little uh, one minute episodes. Very sweet, very fun. Big thumbs up. Actually, I don't know if I watched the 13th episode of that. I think I might have only watched 12 because I didn't know they had 13 episodes. So I got something I can watch. Um, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Record of Ragnarok came out all at once and it's trash. It's not um, X-Arm bad, but it is the worst show this season. Um, it's 12 episodes and it's it's all computer generated and it's a lot of it's a lot of like stills of a character and like line movements to suggest um movement it's not like a like a motion comic like another show I'm about to talk about but it it's awful it don't watch it it's on netflix it, don't it's bad it's incredibly terrible it also seems like the manga isn't good either but the manga fans are so also aren't happy with it, so it's like okay. Um, the Gundam series, I don't know what that is. Snack time, I don't know what that what. It, Way of the House Buzzman is the last thing of the current season we're going to talk about. Um, some people really like this interpretation. I didn't. Now I should say that the mangaka apparently really wanted it to be this way. And apparently, according to him, enjoyed it. And that's great, but I don't have to care about that. It's not my responsibility to care if someone likes the anime adaptation of their work or doesn't. Just the same way if, a, if the mangaka or writer is like, I didn't like this. That's also okay. Um, I liked it once I got used to the animation style. My problem is I never got used to the animation style. I was just watching it because it's a motion comic. It's a motion comic, and I'm like, what if they animated this instead? I just never, I just didn't like it. I got through four episodes. I didn't watch the fifth one. Maybe I will someday. It's incredibly disappointing. Um, this reminded me of those weird Marvel motion comics. Yeah, it, it, it feels like a motion comic. And I don't care if the, the manga is like, this is good. Um, it's just, yeah, it's really frustrating to watch. Um, the live action shorts they made to advertise this are better than the show find those they're on youtube uh those are way better because that's just a live action version yeah it's frustrating um uh yasuke, yasuke is good but not great it is um it's hard to watch uh because i think the story is really good and the execution is really bad just yeah, this is um. We talk. I, I talk. I talk a lot about Mappa. Mappa has two shows coming out next season. There's Good Mappa, and I feel like there should be. They should put some stuff out under like all lowercase Mappa, and I think this was a all lowercase Mappa. Uh, I'm hoping the good team gets the show. Yeah, uh, there is. There's robot stuff. It's not a lot, but there's there's mechanical stuff in the show. It's not a focal point. There's the, there's there's some robot shit in there. It look, it's got mechs and magic. Yeah, I mean the real thing is that um, these are all tags that are suggested by the community. So sometimes they are they are slightly inaccurate. Like um, because his name was NASA, uh, over the moon for you was called science fiction for a little while until people were like, it's definitely not a science fiction show. So it happens. Um, I have not seen the OBAs for Yuri Camp. They came out in Blu-rays. Uh, they have not been put out by Crunchyroll. Uh, and I have not found fan subs of them. So I have not watched the OBAs, uh, which came out with the Yuri Camp Blu-rays um, season two. The first, the season two, the regular season two was fucking great. So I would like to watch these OBAs and I have not. Uh, and that's it for that. So we're going to go all the way back up to the top here. We can finally talk about summer 2021. Uh, it took a long time to get through all the rest of that. We're going to get through this. Some of these shows, 
do not have English names because they have not been uh, picked up by anybody. So we don't know if we don't know if they are. Uh, they do a good job of like trolling the sites and looking for announcements and updating, but um, often they don't throw in the English name if someone hasn't picked it up. So I don't know if D side uh, Tramier is going to get picked up. That doesn't look like something I want to watch anyway. Um, uh, did anyone pick this up so far? I don't think anyone's picked up Dead Five Beyond the Battle. Uh, but I also probably won't pick that. Probably won't watch that because it looks like another uh, like death game kind of anime, and I'm not really into death games animes. Um. Hey, there's a lot of isekai this season, and I'm going to watch all of them except for one, and we'll get to that one. There's one I'm not going to watch. I'm going to watch Drugstore in Another World, The Soul Life of a Cheat Pharmacist. I really like the premise. Uh, it does feel like it's a harem anime, and I'm not always opposed to that. It depends on how much they are into the main character, or if they're not into him, or if they're just excited to be his friend. You know that can that can make or break it, but it's basically like, um, uh, he basically shows up in another world and becomes a pharmacist to help people. Um, yeah, basically that's what he's gonna do. Uh, and yeah, he's got a cool overpowered skill. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's gonna hopefully be cute. There's some, you know, the characters look cute and fun. I hope it's good. I'm interested in the show. It looks to be another family sitcom style this guy. Yeah, I mean, my hope is that it's like by the grace of the gods and, you know, there's another one coming out that is probably going to be more etchy um, that might be a little more uh, I don't know if it's somebody Demon Lord. We'll get to that when we get to that. Um, Fana Pirate Princess. Um, I don't know if this is, I know this is Crunchyroll is co-producing it. I don't know if it's going to be on Crunchyroll or if it's going to be on Adult Swim first and then Crunchyroll. I actually can't tell you. Um, but this is kind of an interesting story about a girl that like ends up becoming like a pirate captain. Uh, and it could be cool. I don't know. Uh, this is an adventure series. Seems neat. But like I said, I actually don't know if it's coming. I know Crunchyroll is co-producing it, but I don't know if it's going to be on adult with adult swim but i don't know if it's going to be on like how that how that's going to work so uh get a robo arc i don't think any i don't think anyone's going to pick up this sequel to the re or no, the this new sequel to get a robo i don't think anyone's going to pick that up um girlfriend girlfriend hey look there's four girls in this uh, Fena is going to be on Toonami. Okay, so it's going to be on Toonami. Um, I'm not going to watch this. This is about, um, hey, I have a girlfriend, but then some other girl says that she likes me. What do I do? I don't know. You keep dating your girlfriend or you break up with her. I don't care either way. And it says there's a love triangle here, but why are there four girls? Because, uh, the main character is a dude. So what the fuck is this? No thanks. I don't know if anyone picked this up. Oh, Crunchyroll did. Okay. Uh, just go out with each other. Easy. Right, Xandra? Xandra, if that's what the story was, I would watch it, of course. Because that sounds cute and fun. That's not the story. Um, also, we don't see the dude, which makes me wonder if this is all first person. Because that those shows turn off too. I made it 20 seconds of the trailer before I turned it off. Yeah, I'm, I didn't watch the trailer or anything. Um... Here's another thing I won't watch the trailer for. For for friend for fans of When They Cry. I'm so happy for you. The remake turned out to be a reimagining. It wasn't a remake, it's a sequel slash like reimagining within the universe where one character knows that this is a repeat of the events and now you're getting a sequel and that kicks ass and I'm so happy for you, but there's no fucking way I'm going to watch this ever. Because I'm never going to, never, ever going to watch this. There's no way. Enjoy your psychological horror. I hope all the characters you like don't die over and over and over again. But I feel like they will. 
um, how to how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. Hey, it's another isekai that I'm gonna watch. As I said, there's only one isekai this season. I know I'm not gonna watch. Um, you know, I say that, but I probably will still watch it. Um, so this dude shows up, and he's like, "Hey, um, you're like, you, we need your help." And he's like, "Okay, here's some financial advice, and here's some, uh, here's how we can rebuild the kingdom." And he's just like a realist. I kind of like that premise that he's like not like a super powered main character. He's just like, yeah, we should bolster our defenses because I could help with this, but like it's going to happen again. We give in. We should like double our efforts to train the army or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. That's kind of a fun idea. I like the premise. I'll check it out. You know I will. Here is the one that. I'm not going to watch this weekly, but I will probably, I will probably, I will probably watch it. It's the second season to I'm Standing on a Million Lives. This got announced as a sequel before the first season had ended because it wasn't that long ago we got the first season. I don't think this is a good show. I respect the idea that the main character sucks and has opportunities to grow and and change as a person and refuses them. Like, it's an ongoing gag that he's like, wait, and he almost has a moment of clarity, and then he doesn't have that moment of clarity. I respect that choice to keep the main character as an absolute awful person that I have no interest in rooting for. But also, I have no interest in rooting for him, and uh, I just... It's it's this thing of like they're going to this digital world, digital fantasy world, and they go back to the reality because in the future that digital world or a like magic shit happens in the future and it doesn't go well. And so these people are tasked with preparing themselves for the future. And I feel like this whole thing is like I don't know this, but I feel like all of this is a future version of him trying to trick to gamify him becoming a better person. And I don't care about that. Uh, this sounds funny on paper, but I'd never watch. Yeah. It's not good. I make it sound better than it is. Again, I will most likely eventually, because I'll probably like wait till it's over and then watch like episodes out of order. Uh, more idolish uh, seven. Um, it's it's a it's a it it's an idol show. I don't I haven't checked that out. Um I don't this well first of all this is this is this isn't airing till a month from now, which is weird that it's it's coming in a month late. Um I don't this it doesn't have an English title, it has not been um it has not been picked up as far as I know, but uh it's it's another one of those demon and in our world so it's that kind of isekai but she's cute um so you know i'm gonna watch it i don't know if it's a weekly show i don't know if it's gonna be one episode uh it's a one shot yeah i don't know um but yeah it's coming out in 30 days and i'll, I'll check it out because I, I think it's like a f fun idea i like the art of it um uh, Kigaki Shou uh, Shoujo, I believe Funimation picked this up, and this is a drama, this is a idol drama show. I mean, it has Shoujo in the title. Um, it, oh, it's not an idol, it's actresses. This is an actress show. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to watch this. Um, Life Lessons with Orochi Onisan. I'm going to give this one episode. It's on Funimation. It is... Uh, actors from a children's show, like a live with audience children's show, and one of the dudes who does the like the um, the uh, like the fitness thing um, is actually like not a happy guy, and it's like the behind the scenes of the like characters, that, the people that play these roles, and it could be very funny. It also could not be very funny, and it could just be very, like, one note. So I don't know if I'm going to try it. I mean, I'm going to give it an episode. I don't know if I'm going to give it more than that. 
uh love live superstar again this is a music th this is another idol show um i have not watched any of the live love live things i like that one song from love live because that's it and that's it um uh I am not going to be watching the second season of Magica Record, Mao Shoujo Madoka Magic Garden, um, which is the sequel to the other side story. This is a sequel to the side story. I will not be watching this because um, I don't necessarily love Magical Girl stuff, but I certainly don't love... When this came out, it was a big deal that this was like, hey... If you think about it, magical girl shit is fucked, right? I respect that. But I'm not going to watch this because I don't like them. Um, did this get picked up? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, th this, I don't think I'm going to watch this either. Uh, I don't think this got picked up. So, um, yet. Yeah. But this is the premise is uh, a dude is basically on the streets and a girl is like, hey, let me help you. Why don't you become the the den mother of our dorm, an all girls dorm? And as you can see there, it's comedy, etchy romance. And I, if this gets picked up, I don't think I'm going to watch it. But if people it's one of those shows where like if somebody I respect a lot is like, hey, this is show is kind of cute and fun. And yeah, it's dirty, but it's good. I mean, I'll try it. But. I don't think I will. I'm out. Um, I am going to watch S. I'm going to watch the sequel to Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. There are caveats to... Oh, I like that they say this is a uh, sequel to um, uh, Dragon Maid Valentine's and Hot Springs, which was the uh, the OVA. That's funny. Um, look, I like Dragon Maid. There are caveats with Dragon Maid. There are episodes I don't love of the first season. I think overall it's cute. Um, especially the first season ends very gay in a way that I love. And the, uh, OVAs are also very gay. Um, and the idea that another dragon shows up and she's just like, well, if I can't fight you, I'm going to steal your woman. So it's her attempt to steal Kobayashi away. And I think that's like a fun premise. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to more of that because I think the show is cute in many ways. Uh, this is the show I'm most looking forward to, especially after reading the manga. Nice. Uh, my next slice of a villainous, All Roots Lead to Doom X. This is the sequel to My Next Life as a Villainous, All Re Roots Lead to Doom. Uh, I'm very excited for this. Uh, the trailer, teaser trailer, did not have subtitles. And so I'm like, I am not sure what's going on with some other characters in this. Uh, hey, guess what? It's an isekai, and I'm watching it. Duh. Um, but I love the first season of this show. Can't wait to watch this. Um, uh, very much looking forward to uh, seeing, like, what happens. Like, are there bonus chapters of the game that she remembers? Uncharted territory of here. Like, there's another kidnapping. What's going on? Uh, are there connections to things that we didn't really see in the first season? What's up? Who's this fucking dude? Like, you know, there's just like a bunch of new characters and stuff. I'm excited. Um, hey, here's my favorite name for an anime that I am never going to watch. It's called Nighthead 2041. It's called, y'all, it's called Nighthead. They named it anime Nighthead. Um, it's two brothers that escape from a thing because they have powers. And then two other brothers are chasing the, those brothers. Uh, and it's all computer generated. And it doesn't look good at all. But it's called Nighthead 2041. I hope it doesn't take place. I know it takes place in the year 2041. I was hoping it didn't. And 2041 is some other reference. But I love that it's just like the distant future of... 20 years from now like mm, i think you gotta call it 21 uh yeah i bet this is hot garbage but it's called nighthead so i like the name um ore uh uh tusima uh tusima um i don't know if anyone's gonna pick this up this is i believe this is a shorty this is a short subject a couple minutes 
it's just like a, a lady who has a bunch of cats and then this one cat shows up uh and messes with this lady. It's just a nice lady just has a lot of cats. And then one cat that's just making her life tough. And uh, I wanna watch it. I hope that I hope that we get it. Um Peach Boy Riverside. Hey, I don't this might be good. Um the first episode is coming out tomorrow. At the time of this recording, the first episode uh is coming out tomorrow. At the time of this going live on my YouTube, uh as Pat Bear's Anime Club, uh it, it has already been out. Um there's some like there's a really cool idea of like this princess who wants to go on a journey and she meets this person. Um and then he goes on his journey and she's like following behind. So we're going to see like her, her version of like events. And then we'll also see like he, what's going on with him. Cause I don't think they're ever really together outside of the, like the first part of the ep, uh, series. Um, and, but also the thing about peach boy, the, the idea of peach boy is that like, it's basically bloodlust. Like our main dude, just fucking loves killing demons. Oni. And then maybe she's also like her eyes there like are big in there, but like they get like big and evil looking. So it's got that like almost like it's one of those things where I'm like, am I gonna like this show or not? Because I can't tell. Cause I like the premise a lot. But I don't know. Also, there's this like bunny. The bunny girl has like a weird it's like weirdly drawn in a way that i think fucking rules and the dog talks and i'm like ooh, the dog talks here's the thing this is a show that i might like abandon like i might get like a couple episodes in and be like actually this sucks but the premise is strong enough that i'm gonna give it a go um pretty all friends selection i don't know what that is i don't think we'll, it's based on a video game i don't think we're gonna see it here um okay so this is the mappa show that i hope the b team is on because uh mappa's got another show i think and i'm hoping this is the b tier mappa and not the main mappa because i don't care about uh a water polo team like i i am sorry if you're very psyched for the show i hope it's great um but I don't, I will never, ever be interested in a men's water polo anime. Like, I don't care what the certain incident in the winter of his third middle school year is. Unless that incident is that they found out that he's gay and then that becomes a big part of the show. That's the only thing that would get me interested in this because that like, yeah, you know, queer sports team anime, I like might be able to get behind. But I bet it's not that. I bet it's something dumb, like some other people were fucking around and did something, and he took the blame for it. Uh, remake our life is. This is like the cute version of Tokyo Revengers, because this is like a dude is just like. I worked really hard at this making video games. My company went out of business. I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I wish I had gone to art school. Boom. Wakes up. Going to art school. Uh, and yeah. Now he gets to follow his dream. Instead of going into game development. Which I guess was not his dream. He. Uh, he goes to art school. He's that dude there. It sounds cute. I'm going to watch it. Um, I have not watched the first two episodes of this because they Funimation put up up on YouTube and I didn't watch uh, any of Scarlet Nexus. It's starting. I will watch the first episode. So it says source video game, but basically they wrote the video game and the anime at the same time. And the video game is out and people are talking about how it's an anime-ass anime video game. My fear is that instead of jumping between characters like you can in the video game, you're just going to follow this dude who... Is just like trying really hard because, you know, they saved his life and now he's going to join the other suppression force. Which, hey, guess what? I bet they're evil. They call the monsters others and they call themselves the other suppression force. That sounds evil. I bet it's evil. 
I bet it's I bet they're evil. Uh yeah, I don't know. I mean I'm gonna try it. But um Okay, so this is this is one of the more interesting isekai that has not really like been talked about too much, I don't think, because it does an interesting thing, which is all right, uh you know how sometimes you end up reborn in a body? What if both parts of you know that? What if you're still a seven year old boy and also your reincarnation from Earth of like a university student? And you're instead of just like in one show, which I won't get into which one, a character is reborn and you're reborn from birth, or in another show where that character died and you took over their body. Most of the time they're just like, yeah, who cares? Um, yeah, it could be bad. I mean, it also becomes a, the real thing is this premise is interesting. And then it, it it's the thing is, then this kid who's special ends up at like a rich kid magic school, uh, magic and fighting school. So it's like, it could just be very generic, but I like the premise a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's picked this up. I assume Funimation will because, or Crunchyroll will. Somebody, I think somebody will because it sounds really cool. I don't know if they will. Uh, uh, Sunny Boy is a show that I am not going to watch, and I hope you really like it, everybody. I hope you really like Sunny Boy. Um, uh, it was on YouTube for like a day, and I didn't watch it. Uh. I am just not interested in a survival, student survival anime, even if it's made by Madhouse. Uh, yeah, I just don't think I'm going to watch that. Uh, I watched the first episode of The Sunny Boy, and that was about all I could handle. Yeah, I mean, so look, do I think it's going to be visually interesting? Yeah, would I probably watch some clips of it? Okay, I just don't, I just don't like the genre. So I just don't think I'm going to watch it. Um, I am going to watch the second half of that time I got reincarnated as slime. This is part two of season two. Um, I am going to watch that. I am looking forward to it. Uh, I love that Veldora doesn't wear a shirt, but does have a cape and gloves. That's a great look. Uh, I We love our himbo Veldora, the human form of the dragon. Um you know, I love that the military outfits are apparently really honestly just for the art and they didn't really wear a lot of it, which was great because like, I was afraid they were going to end up with that in first season uh, or first part of season two. I'm looking forward to more of it. Um, I have been reading the manga. I am caught up on the manga. So here's our girls who are into a thing anime, but not really because it's this is definitely feels like this is going to be. I don't know why there's a mystery part of this. This does sound like it's going to be great. And I like PA works a lot. And I am interested in this anime about a girl who f washes out of being an idol, but doesn't want to go back home, a failure, and ends up meeting a high school girl who, like, inherited or... Like is trying to save this aquarium, and then yeah, I guess the 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 mystery is that there's like sometimes you can see mysterious things, like but that probably I, I my my assumption is that like they'll discover it's nothing really nonsense. Um. Uh. But yeah, it's basically like a girl who's like, my dream failed. I want to help you with your dream, and that sounds cool. I'm into that. I'm gonna check it out. Um, that's a crunchy roll. Um, the case study of Vanitas is coming from Bones. I like Bones. Um, I don't know if I'm going to, I'm going to give this one episode. I don't know if I'm going to give it more than one episode. Um, because it's a vampire show, but it could be good. I don't know. Um, the detective is already dead. I just know I'm not going to watch this. I just know I'm not going to watch this. I do like the idea of a I wonder how much is going to be flashbacks because I actually I would think it would be cool if there weren't any flashbacks because it's like this dude through circumstance became the assistant of the world's best detective and then she died 
And then he was like, okay, well, that's over. And okay. And then like another girl shows up that maybe is connected to her. And then it turns out that now this mystery is continuing. And I, if there's a lot of flashbacks, I probably won't like that. But I like the, I, I don't know, the premise is interesting. I just feel like I'm never going to watch the show. If it comes out on like a Sunday or Monday, I'll watch it. Like that's it, right? Uh, reminds me of Lost Roaders. And yeah, I don't know. I like that it just picks up after, it picks up after stuff we didn't see as if we know that story. And I think that's kind of interesting. Like I said, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of flashbacks. Also, um, yeah, like I said, if it's a Sunday or Monday show, I might watch it because there usually aren't a lot of shows those days for me to watch. Uh, I know I'm not going to watch this. I don't like the art style of it at all. Uh, the the Duke of Death and his maid. I just, yeah, everything he touches dies, but then he's got a maid to be friends with him. And that's a power dynamic that I don't think is cool. I don't know. Um, this is, I believe this is the last Isekai. I think this is the last Isekai of this. This season has so many Isekai. Uh, the Dungeon of Black Company is just like, uh, this dude that has a good, the good life, and then he gets summoned, and he ends up being a slave. And, uh, then he's just like, okay, well, I'm gonna survive by being greedy. I mean, I'm going to check out the first episode. It's an Isekai. I'll watch it. I don't think I'm going to keep watching it. You know, just doesn't, it, it doesn't feel like this. Oh, I think there's actually one more Isekai, right? Uh, I just don't feel like this is going to like pull my, hold my attention. Um, the honor student, the honor at Magic High School. It should be honor student, right? It's the, so this is the, there's the irregular Magic High School, which is a two season show. Um, with Tatsuya. So the irregular at Magic High School. So this is the honor at Magic High School. And it's focusing on this girl who is the younger sister, who is the sit who, who is in love with her brother. Um, and it has some of the characters that I like from the show. I definitely am not gonna be watching this weekly. I will definitely probably just get caught up on this later because I don't know why I would watch it weekly, because it's a weird show. Um this is the MAPPA I hope is the good MAPPA. I hope the good MAPPA is working on this show because this show could be a sleeper hit. This could be the best show of the season. Um, gods appeared when humanity was on the verge of destruction. Um, and then they, that, but then that was 800 years ago. So now they're just like kind of hanging out and living peaceful lives and like their descendants or maybe they've forgotten how to fight. And then demons are coming back. So now they're like, well, we need you to be kick ass again. And so they got to figure that out. I don't know. The, the trailer looked cool. This could be great. Um, okay, so this one, we didn't even get the English name yet because I don't think anyone picked this up. Um, this is the last Isekai of the season to talk about. I, uh, I want to say that this is like something like Moonlight. Um, it's like two, It's like Tsukigama or something like that. Um, but, uh, the premise is very good, in my opinion. A dude gets summoned to another world, and then the goddess that summoned him is just like, oh, wait, actually, you're ugly. Get out of here. And then he just get kicks, he gets kicked out. Um, and, but he has powers and stuff. The main problem is that I feel like it's going to be um like demon lord retry or how not to summon a demon lord that's my fear is this is going to be etchy because all of the monsters that hang out with him because he's ugly as a human so he's accepted by monsters are all very beautiful monsters so i'm like mm -hmm. what's going on here uh yeah so i don't know i feel like that could that could be a show that i start watching and then i'm like actually this sucks uh, and then some shorts. Uh, it's so weird that they do. The Salt Lily has a mini show. I don't think that'll be picked up. Um, more uh, of this, more more of that uh, the series. So if that's what you're into. Cool, you get more of that. Um, yeah, Blue Light Reflection continues. Uh, Eden Zero continues. 
My Hero Continues, Shaman King, To Your Eternity, Welcome to Demon School Irma, and then um, it's a very small harem of two. Uh, if it's like the manga, uh, but he's clueless to it. Dirty, that sounds great. If he's clueless, that's awesome. If he just doesn't understand that, I think that's great. Uh, then we got some movies and stuff coming out. Um, uh, most excited about uh, World's Heroes mission, because I think the outfits just look incredible. Holy shit. Uh, they finally made a cool outfit for Deku that doesn't have like too many colors that, don't, that clash. Uh, another Fate movie. Um, this is the... the Compilation of uh, Reconquista and G, G Reco. Uh, oh, I can't wait for this. Look, it's a compilation, but it's going to have new scenes. We're getting more of Kashigoto. We're getting more Kashigoto, and Funimation is going to air it. They're going to air it. I'm so psyched about that. Oh, also, uh, Wonder, uh, Wonder Egg Priority. Yeah. You got your special. I believe Funimation now has that. You got your actual end of that anime because they, they episode number 12, they didn't finish the story. They finished the story with the special. So go watch that. Um, uh, King Real Mosaic is, this is, a, this is the show. They made a move. They're making a movie. This is the show where um, uh, I wouldn't mind more Kashi Gozo. Yeah, even if it's just like extra stuff. That's great. So this is a, a anime where this character and this character, the blonde girls, are both, uh, they know each other, and they both speak English, and they're native English speakers, and one of them, the voice actress is having a real tough job, and the other is not. And it's very funny, because they're both supposed to be very good at speaking English, and one of them is not. Um, it's cute. It's a cute show. Uh... Well, we're getting a mo we're getting a movie film uh, with a completely new story by the original author. Ooh, the original author wrote the movie. That's fun. Hey, look, it's that it's the Butt Man. The Butt Man has a movie. The Butt Man. Um, that looks. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay, we're getting some uh, OBAs. Uh, why is there? Uh. Why is there a 13th episode to Isekai Cheat Magician? I don't know. Will Crunchyroll show this episode because they showed the first series? Uh, probably. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, three days from now, I'm going to see if it shows up on Crunchyroll. The 13th episode of Isekai Cheat Magician. That's a Isekai that exists. Um, the mini thing. I don't know why Q is that was on their Twitter account. I'm getting more of that. Ooh. Um, the episodes were bundled with volume 16 and 18 of the manga. Okay. That's kind of fun. I might, I might try to find that. I don't know if it's going to show up on Kurtzero. That's cool. Uh, Nomad, or we're just getting a, oh, it's a short in there. Um, definitely won't watch that. Uh, Saga of Tanya the uh, 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 the evil. Uh, it, it's more Tanya. Uh, I will definitely watch the OVA of uh, in August. I will watch the OVA of uh, Tony Kawa Over the Moon for You. I didn't watch the show as it aired. I really liked it eventually. And then yes, Wonder Egg Priority. My priority. Um, I think it took a little while to show up on uh, Funimation, but it's out. So if you were bummed by the ending of wonder egg because it's not an ending there's more wonder egg uh so you're you're you, please watch that um and uh i'm going to talk to my streaming audience here now but right now i'm going to say goodbye to everybody that watched this video thank you for watching this very long video about the uh uh my summer preview and my spring wrap up um uh, leave a comment below the show you're most excited about for next season and uh, thanks for watching and check out the other uh, videos of Pat Bear's Anime Club. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. Uh, and again, check out this live show on the 16th. Goodbye.